LA is one of the world's art capitals. So LAist and KCET's Artbound are teaming up to show you vital new documentaries about LA's exciting art scene. Get tickets now at LAist.com slash events. LAist Studios. Lights, camera, action! I'm Brian De Los Santos, and this is How to LA, the podcast that helps you discover new things about Los Angeles and other parts of our region. Back in August, we met up with film location scout Rick Schuler downtown. He led a guided tour of film locations throughout the neighborhood. My favorite stop was the Grand Oviet building that was featured in Mr. and Mrs. Smith and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and many other films. Today, we're heading out with Rick again, east of downtown in South Pasadena, and then on to Pasadena to talk about what their neighborhoods have to offer to film location scouts. The long story short is a wide variety of single family homes that can stand in for the Midwest or the East Coast or a non-specific suburb. The Midwest part makes a lot of sense when you look back at history because white non-Hispanic founders of the cities in the 1870s were from Indiana. Our first stop on the tour, because it's fall and spooky season, was a filming location from the 1978 horror movie Halloween. But my horror story that morning was L.A. traffic. So producer Monica Bushman, intern Claire Forgerty, and visual journalist Samantha Hilo Hernandez started off without me. So right here is the what they call the Myers House. So basically where we are now, we're at the intersection of, um, what is it, Mission and Meridian. And uh, we're in front of one of the houses that was used in Halloween with Jamie Lee Curtis way back in 1978. Uh, This is where the first murder takes place in the movie. Now, the interesting thing is that this house was not here when they shot the movie. This house was across the street over there, I think at 707 Meridian. And uh, they moved it to this location because what happens is there's redevelopment. And so they put in some, I think, or townhomes or condos over there. But the reason they kept this is that I think this might be the oldest um, house in, uh, in South Pasadena. Oh, wow. It's Victorian style. Um, and, you know, it's like the question might be like, well, why did they choose this house for the first kind of thing? But... Um, I, I think they chose it because it was old. Um, I think they liked the architecture, the way you come up. You can see the windows up top. The way you somewhat know that it's Victorian influenced as opposed to just like a colonial mm-hmm. is sort of the narrowness of the windows and the height of the windows. Because uh, everything Victorian was sort of more vertical than it was horizontal in terms of uh, the architecture. So let's just walk up here because I want to show you what... Okay, so this is like a semi-tourist trap. I thought maybe when we showed up, there would be people sitting on, yeah. the, uh, on the porch and having their picture taken. But um, actually, if you want to do that, we can do that. <laughs> but or we, can, or we can keep going. Let me just show you right yeah, here. Yeah. I guess this is something that's taking on where movie locations are becoming kind of a touristy thing. Yeah. And um, right next door, this Sugarman Gallery has kind of taken advantage of uh, what's next door. Oh, and yeah. so it's obviously Halloween's coming up. So you can see here is what, welcome to Haddonfield. And Haddonfield was the name of the town that this was supposed to take place in. But they chose South Pasadena. And we'll learn as we kind of walk around. South Pasadena is like an everywhere American city, um, basically from the Midwest or the East Coast. Mm-hmm. and. What makes it that are the the tree-lined streets, the architecture that's here, and it feels like a small town, even in the midst of where we are in L.A., because we're in L.A. proper, uh, it still feels like a small town. Well, and it's funny, too, the the coffee shop here that they've kind of taken advantage of the connection to the Halloween 
the Halloween movie house too, too because they yeah. have Michael Myers like painted on the windows. Oh, like, the you know, I didn't pay attention street. to that because I yeah. I haven't been here for a while, and that when I was here, that was a an ice cream shop. Right. But they're no longer here. Jones Coffee Shop is here. Love Jones Coffee Shop. So yeah, so this is where this was. If you watch the movie, um, you'll notice in the movie that these trees are still there. So oh. these trees used to line both sides of the street, and then they kind of got rid of it over there. Obviously, you can see they've replanted. Um, but this is sort of the original, and some of the original homes are still here. So they basically took that one block out and then moved the house over here. That's yeah, so it's nice. I mean, South Pasadena and Pasadena, are great about preservation. So they don't mow things down like you do across LA and LA County. All right, well, why don't we head to another Halloween um, house? And that would be the one where it's Jamie Lee Curtis's house in the movie. And I imagine like with South Pasadena, probably Pasadena more mm -hmm. and Altadena, like, you have to be aware of like the mountains or just making sure that yes. that is and, and palm shown. trees yeah palm trees can be the bane of our existence they used to be i mean that's sort of like the first thing you kind of look at you find this great location you go oh this is great and then you kind of frame it up and you see like two houses in the background or a backyard with a palm tree and it's like oh <laughs> so way back when when i started that became a big issue like unless you shot it in or framed it in a certain way where you didn't see the palm tree, that sort of limited you. Mm -hmm. In the age now of CGI and all that kind of stuff, they can quickly now say, oh, we can remove that. Right. But to remove something back then, you had to rotoscope that tree out of there, but that could be a thousand frames. So for each frame, you gotta sort of get rid of it to keep the cons consistency. And that was just too expensive to mm. do that kind of thing. But in terms of trees, we love these camphor trees. Like these trees right here, that says Midwest to us. And a canopy street with this kind of stuff is great. You know, we're walking down Diamond Avenue past Caldy Coffee Shop, and the library is there, and the headquarters for the school is right here. And like these three buildings, like we had talked about downtown, like certain corners are just quintessential. And this would be, to me, and I think to people in our industry, like quintessential small town. The coffee shop, it's a brick building. It's, there are a few brick buildings in, in, uh, in, in LA, but for the most part, that's not sort of their choice. Um, same with the school, and then the library is just a small library. So their next destination was a short walk away at the corner of Fairview Avenue and Oxley Street. So we are approaching right here, and Jamie Lee Curtis's home in the original Halloween. It's still the same structure. It's painted a different color. It's not white. It's craftsman in style. Um, and it's actually up for sale. Well, it looks like it's sold. <laughs> the pillars outside the house are a popular photo taking spot with visitors sitting on them like Jamie Lee Curtis did on Halloween holding a pumpkin. And the former owners used to leave pumpkins out on the porch year-round, with a sign saying they were free to borrow for taking pictures. It'll be interesting to see if the new owner will, like, transform this and, um, you know, paint it differently and kind of upscale it more. So it's nice that we, on uh, our Halloween, pre-Halloween thing, that we have a... Uh, <laughs> We have a, an active spider um, next to the front light with a pretty incredible <laughs> web. But see, that's all like how scouting is. You just don't know what you're going to encounter. Oh my and, God, and, and, yeah. Um, and that's sort of the excitement of it. I mean, the other part of it is that I might sit in a car, and, and in South Pasadena, there's so many houses that could fit the bill. It's like, well, why did they choose this one, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know that I can say why. If, if you, I just remember way in 78, I'm guessing the town was a little bit more run down than it is now. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look closely at, at some of the homes they were shooting, and I, I look for it because I'm interested in that. If you look down at the baseboards or the door frames, you'll see chip paint off of the bottom. But on film, that that doesn't really show up that much. It's actually 
a rundown place can look really good photographically. And so uh, that could be partly why they wanted it. It's a corner lot. I mean, the interesting thing is that the library is across the way, and you never see that. You In the movie, you think it's just down a main street um, yeah, and I or guess a residential was, street. Yeah, if it had been sitting vacant, that's maybe helpful because yeah. you can just fill it with whatever you exactly. want. Exactly, yes, yeah. yeah. Don't have to worry about it. And yeah. I, I, yeah, I wonder if that was the case. But, yeah, that's what we would have to do is talk to the people about whether they want to do it, and then you slowly, it's like you, you put a wedge in there to kind of, you don't want to give them too much info too quickly. <laughs> and then eventually, yes, we are going to, you know, we need to move you out into a hotel. We want to take all your stuff out and put it in storage. We want to bring our stuff in. After the break, I make it through traffic and meet up with the crew to continue on to Pasadena. Chris Bryan! Chris Bryan! <laughs> so much traffic. I don't know why. Oh, hi. Coming on a 10 too. We're inviting you to an exciting new live event series that shows you why L.A. is one of the world's art capitals. L.A.ist and KCET's Artbound are screening new documentaries about an L.A. art rebellion. East West Players, Angel City Press, and more. And then we're bringing in the artists and the filmmakers for talkback sessions. So you can learn more about this vital art scene. It's all happening at the Crawford in Pasadena. Get tickets now at LAist.com slash events. On our way from South Pasadena to Pasadena, we were going to either stop at Morgan Freeman's character's house from the 1995 thriller Seven, a Victorian style house on Columbia Street, or a house from the National Treasure series, starring Nicolas Cage. I'm going to steal it. The colonial style National Treasure House is where we ended up. What? I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence. That's uh, National Treasure. Oh, wow. That's uh, that's more like Washington D.C. Okay, I can see that. So this was used in both oh, of them. It would be John Voight's character wow. in National Treasure, and um, this would be like a two-story colonial. The interesting thing, and maybe nobody else would think about this, but us who are scouting, but um, it's painted white, which at some level can be kind of boring. But white painted houses like this is very much like the East Coast, um, that they're painted white and then the shutters are painted an accent color. And then the door usually could be a third color. So immediately by looking, if I find a white house like that, that's already moving me in this direction. So it's white, it's got wood siding, and it's a two-story colonial. And then when we, I walked in this house, it didn't feel like anything else I had been in. Uh, and the way it was, it felt more East Coast to me. Um, so the only thing I was worried about when we chose this house was that, you know, it has this royal stone kind of uh, retaining wall. And like you wouldn't find that in uh, on the East Coast or in at least not in Washington. But we were able to kind of work around that. So you just don't shoot that. So wait, um, did you guys already get into how... You see a, a beautiful home that represents something that you really want, and then you yeah. just knock on the door and be like, hey, can I use your home? Did you get Let's into that? that. Yeah. We did a little and bit, we did I get into that at our next destination. As we drove there, we passed some more filming locations. Yeah. That is the, that, that we're just crossing there on El Molino. That was the fa one of the father of the bride houses. Oh, I know. Um, <laughs> right there. Yeah, is where Steve Martin, that yeah. was his house. Yeah. yeah. We also so passed the Spanish-style mansion on El Molino, Molino Avenue from the classic 1974 film, Chinatown. Though it's pretty hidden by hedges. You know, growing up in LA, yeah. I used to actually, my dad would drive me to yeah. school in the valley and then come yeah. back to Mid-City. Yeah. Um, we'd always see roads closed yeah. because of filming, yeah. whether it was super early in the morning yeah. or Later. anytime, yeah. late. Yeah. Um, can you explain to us how you get all these all that equipment and crews to to be in a certain neighborhood because that must cost a lot of money but also like just the logistics of it right behind yeah. the scenes the logistics of it are, are huge so once you find the house yeah you need to really talk to everybody in the neighborhood so in la it's kind of easier to get a neighborhood on board because they're looking for what they would call neighborhood support 
And neighborhood support would be, you still have to get signatures, which is you talk to people and they need to sign a sheet wow. saying we have concerns or we don't have concerns. And if we have concerns, this is what they are. And they'll look at all that. So for instance, if they have 50% of people that have concerns and 50 that don't, that's you're you're not in you're like okay we need to see more support mm -hmm. in there and so if you have 80 or more and depending on where uh, and then that's daytime so daytime 7 to 10 is pretty automatic you don't necessarily have to get signatures for that right because that's normal business hours kind of but in other places uh, like Pasadena where we're going now Monday through Thursday is is like almost a hundred percent. I think it's seventy percent from seven to seven, but we never go just till seven. We'll go to ten, so then the number goes up. But um, here at, at this house, we needed to do nighttime filming. Um, I think we're coming up on it. Our uh, next stop was on San Pasqual yeah, Avenue like at the house used for the exterior shots of the main character's home for the 2005 film Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And, you know, it starred in Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. And I drove around with the production designer because we, I forget what it was, like we were behind and finding something or whatever. And so we just drove around and we drove down this thing and I know the different neighborhoods to look in. And we go, hey, what about that one? I'm like, sure. So I went and knocked on the door and this guy comes out and come to find out he worked for Disney at the time. So my first reaction was like, oh boy, <laughs> people in the industry. That doesn't necessarily work out really well for me. It's like, you know, we see this all the time. It's our life. It's like, you know, or, or we think we should get millions of dollars wow. and they should know better. Yeah. Uh, that kind of thing. So, but they were very pleasant. Um, so I talked about them. At the time, we wanted to crash a car onto the lawn. If you revisit the movie, there's it plays a predominant um place in the movie oh, yeah. where they These come and go and have that fight inside, yeah, they, right? yes it's and car chase around here oh wow yeah so yeah they come down and they go down the driveway to the garage we built a garage on the back side okay. to be separate from the house it had a garage that went inside but we built one because of what we wanted to do and then we built a shed because that's where he has all his ammunition downstairs okay. they were fine with dropping a you know having a car jump the curb and end up on their lawn at that time it was all ivy they've put some nice grass in since then um, but they were just really open to it really wonderful people and then what we often do is that we use the entrances and exits to come in and out um, or we're looking out a window or they're looking in a window and because of the nature of what we were doing in this house with the shootout and so forth uh, they built it on stage um, but at the end, you know, the house explodes. Um, right. And that we did in the backyard. We did a little explosion uh, kind of there. And then you kind of fill that in with CG and all that kind of stuff. And this was like, because we filmed here for, I think, five days. And I needed five days where I went all the way till midnight. So it's you need 100%, I think, of the neighborhood support. And it, it's funny, when you, when you finally settle into a neighborhood, you really get to know the politics uh, and the dynamics of a neighborhood. At some level, even better than the people that live here. Imagine. Because you're, you're talking to everybody. Yeah. So you know so-and-so doesn't like so-and-so. Oh, wow. Or so-and-so likes so-and-so. So it's kind of interesting that way. And, and what people care about, you know. And then one other thing I'm looking is like, okay, so I got some palm trees there, huge. Yeah. That's kind of a problem. Yeah, because it doesn't give you the East Coast vibe. No. So what we did in this case is we wrapped it with two semi-cylinder oak-looking or camphor tree-looking um, shells. And so we did like 10 feet of that. So that as you're driving down, it looks like all you're seeing is the trunk anyways. And so that's one of the ways that we get around that stuff. I had, I had talked about how... Um, Palm trees are kind of something that's a weed for us at some level. Unless you're trying to do LA, then you're looking for palm trees all over the place. Well, do we want to try to do the? Yeah, the let's inside? go. Okay, yeah. Cool. So I'd like to kind of just have you guys have the experience of. Um, I don't know that they're here. I didn't contact them. So this is what I would do. I would drive and I would okay. say this and go like, okay, magnolia trees. Those are great. You know, um, nice lawn driveway. And mentally, you're kind of, I'm sort of thinking of what my pitch is going to be or what right. I'm going to say. Mm. Um, but 
I'm, I'm guessing they're both working. Um, so, oh, hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I'm a location yeah. scout. Is this still uh, Reed Leslie's house? Are you one of his sons? I am one of his sons. I'm the location manager that did Mr. and Mrs. Smith here. Oh my gosh. And this is Elias. To our surprise, NPR, Robbie Leslie Elias. answered the door and even let us in to take a little look around. Can we actually ask you a couple questions? Sure. Is that uh, cool? Sure. How old were you when this was shooting? Probably seven. Do you remember being outside of your home like your parents, hey, we can't be home because there's something happening. They're explaining to you. I do. We were put up in the Ritz-Carlton a couple miles away. I remember putting it to good use. I would always go down to the bar after school and ask for <laughs> a bowl of cereal, which they say, would Damn, always at, provide. At seven? <laughs> now it's kind of like every icebreaker thing that I ever need. I can be like, oh, have you ever seen Mr. and Mrs. Smith? That's it's a good house. date pickup line exactly. or whatever. <laughs> no, it didn't get blown up. <laughs> yes. um, but yeah, it's, it's a cool thing to have. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Well, that Your was lotion, fun. Maybe? I'm glad that worked yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. From there, it was a quick hop on the 210 to get to an iconic film location that attracts architecture buffs and film lovers alike. Okay, what next? Gamble House? Gamble House, let's do it. This is the quintessential craftsman in the arts and crafts um, style. This was done by the Green Brothers, and this was for the Gamble family of Procter & Gamble way mm. back when. Mm. And they call this Million Dollar Row, because I think a lot of the people with a lot of money would, would build houses like this. Today would be more billionaires, I suppose. So they had this house commissioned uh, to be done. And it's impeccable. It's amazing. I mean, we're not inside. Um, but everything down to the furniture is detailed. The craftsmanship is amazing. And they got to use it uh, back then for Back to the Future. It was Doc's house in the movie. Doc? Don't say a word. I don't want to know your name. I don't want to know anything about you. You know, they come and go out of the door, but people are always like, because if you go in there and you see the detail of inlaid wood within wood and all that, you're like, oh, film crew. I can't believe they let us film crew in here. And you'd be right. They did not let a film crew in there because it'd be irreplaceable. You couldn't replace it. So what they ended up doing is they went to another incredible green and green home uh, in Pasadena called the Blacker House. Uh, and it's an amazing, it's an amazing neighborhood, an amazing house, uh, and they shot it in there. But this is definitely something worth seeing. People come around the world to see this place. So we'll go to the right over there, but look at the detail on this uh, stained glass and the wood. And the, look at that light fixture. I mean, all that is um, green and green uh, and craftsman. So would Rick pick this location to use for a film today, given that it's now so iconic? Yeah, but not so much because it was a gamble house, but more because it was in Back to the Future. <laughs> Sorry to say. I mean, in some sense, that's good because, you know, we, we showcase certain things that people sort of get interested in preserving and that kind of thing. Well, thanks, Rick, for showing us around another iconic place in Los Angeles. Oh, it was a pleasure to do this with you. And that's a wrap on our Film Location Tour. Thanks to Film Location Scout and Manager Rick Schuler for heading out with us again. You can find our first chat with him about downtown LA in our podcast feed. If you want to check out photos of the places where we stopped this time around, head to las.com slash howtola. This episode was produced by Monica Bushman. Our other team members include Erica Washington, Evan Jacoby, Victoria Alejandro, and Megan Botel. We'll be back here tomorrow with a tribute to Dia de los Muertos, and we'll be tasting a few treats. Join us.
Support for this podcast is made possible by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe that quality journalism makes Los Angeles a better place to live. 